Hello and welcome to this section 6.1 video. Uh, hopefully you had a good week off and ready to get back at it for just a couple more weeks until the end of the term. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. Today we're going to be talking about identifying and representing functions. So module six is really all about these things called functions. Now they are sort of a I guess, uh, I guess uh, extension of what we've been talking about. But let's go ahead and see how they relate to the, the graphing lines type of concept that we've, that we've been talking about. So in this first one, it says that Carlos needs to buy some new pencils from the school supply store to, at his school. Carlos asks his classmates if they know how much pencils cost. And Angela says she bought two for 50 cents. Paige bought three for 75 cents, and Spencer bought four pencils for a dollar. Carlos thinks about the rule for the price of a pencil as a machine. When he puts a number in, puts in the number uh, that he, he wants to buy, the number of pencils he wants to buy, the machine applies some rule and then tells him the cost of it. All right, so let's go ahead and look at what we're, what we're thinking about here. So when, when he kind of re replays what he's talked about with his friends in his mind here, um, he remembers that uh, that one person bought two pencils and it cost them 50 cents. Okay, someone else bought three pencils and it cost them 75 cents. And somebody bought four pencils and it cost them a dollar. So... What is the rule? Um, as we sort of work our way through this, we could probably think about, um, and the way that this works is that we're, we're putting these numbers, these number of pencils into the machine, and what's coming out of the machine is the total cost. Okay. Um, so if we have X number of pencils, our rule is going to be, it's looking like 25 cents per pencil. So 25, 0.25 times X would be our rule. Um, and then that total cost would just be the same. <clears throat> so if we buy 12 pencils, we're gonna look at 0.25 times 12. And that's going to be Go ahead and work that out for me. You should get $3. Okay. <clears throat> um, describe any patterns you see. Um, we see the cost increases. By 25 cents. Per pencil. Okay. And so one pencil costs 25 cents. We might write it this way in our back to our unit rate concepts. Okay. So we did all those steps already. We figured out how much, um, how much it would cost for him to buy 12 pencils. It says, how did you decide what operation to use in your rule? Um, when we notice a cost, cost per item, that uses multiplication. Anytime we find a, sorry, this is kind of bugging me that it's lagging behind a little. Let me take a look at that. Okay, 
So any time that we run into a situation where something costs so much per uh, per number of items you buy or per one item, then we'll be looking at multiplication to use there. Carlos decides, so this is like an extension, um, Carlos decides to buy erasers in a package. Uh, there are six pencil top erasers and two packages of erasers. So write a rule in words for the number of packages Carlos needs to buy to get X racers. Then write it as an algebraic expression. Okay, so if he wants to get, so we're saying here that he wants to end up with X erasers, so X number of erasers, um, we notice that there are six erasers in two packages. So we might say six erasers in two packages. Let me say two packs. Um, so a, a natural idea might be, well, how many erasers in, are in one pack? There's three erasers in one pack. All right. So that can help us to find out if we want to get so many erasers, we can figure out how many packages to buy. So we might say if we want to get um, our the, the number of packages, uh, dang it. if we look at our number of packages to buy, has to equal <coughs> the number of erasers we want. So I'll say erasers wanted Um, and, and then we need some operation. Some operation is going to happen here. And, and what's that going to be? If I want, let's say, 15 erasers, or let's go with 12 erasers because that's how many pencils he bought, right? Um, if I wanted 12 erasers, how many packs would I have to buy? Well, since there's three erasers in one pack, I actually need to buy four packs. And so how do I get from 12 to 4? With, with three is another number that can be involved there. That's, that's how I think about coming up with these expressions. I'm actually going to be dividing it by the three erasers per pack. Okay. Um, and, and so just to write a rule for that, for X erasers, um, divided by three is going to give us the number of packs we have to buy. So if we want 18 erasers, we divide that by three, that's going to tell us that we need six packs. I, I apologize for that pen lag, but I, I don't know the issue of it. Um, but let's go ahead and move on. So it says here, identifying functions from mapping diagrams. A function assigns exactly one output to each input. That is a rule for a function. Um, it says the value is put into, the value that is put into the function is called the input, and the result is the output. So again, thinking about that machine idea that they had on the previous page. Okay. The numbers that we put in are called the input, and the numbers that come out are the output. So that, that idea continues to make sense. Okay. Um, it says a mapping diagram can be used to represent a relationship between input and output values. Your map, uh, mapping diagram represents a function if each input is paired with only one output. So two things that we need in these sort of circle diagrams here. 
Number one, we need a line that comes from every number in the input and only one line, or, or wait a minute. Yeah, only one line coming from each number in the input. I always get those mixed up and have to think about it. Um, says here that uh, just looking at this one, we want to determine whether it's a function or not. And I'll give you sort of a more general example in just a second. Uh, since each input value is paired with only one output value, the relationship is a function. So since there's only one line coming out of each one of these on the left, then it's a function. Let's look at what they have for a second one. Here we see that we have zero and two and then one, one, four and five in the output. On the input, I have zero goes to one, but two also goes from, um, two goes from, sorry, two goes to uh, four and five. I was thinking too much. So since there's two lines coming out of the two, that can't, that can't work out, okay? Um, this, this one here says, is it possible for a function to have more than one input value, but only one output value? Okay, so for that, we're looking at more than one input. So if I keep thinking about input and output, and I think I have one, two, and three, and then I only have one over here. Can this make us a function? Well, to illustrate this, let me give you another example. So let's take a look at this example right here. And, and I have kind of a classic way that I look at this, but I think that this will make, this is very similar to what I usually, uh, how I usually relate it to, uh, to students, but not exactly the same. Usually I use teachers and what they teach. But what I want to look at is, let's look at your class schedule. And not to dive us back into the start of the school year when everybody was confused about what their schedule is, but let's just look at a, at a simplified version of your class schedule. And let's create a function out of that. And let's make sure or kind of get a better understanding of when something is and isn't a function using this visualization. So let's just say that I have, that I have this scenario, okay? I've got, this is going to be my function. Um, right here. So under this function, we have, uh, you have first period English, then math, then history, then PE. Everything's good there. There's no, there's no problems there. Okay. Um, so, so that's a function. Right, that, that works, so it's a function. Just relate those two things together. If it works, it's a function. This one would be weird, but it is, I mean, I, I would say that it isn't possible before this year, but having been through this year, um, something similar might be possible. Let's say third, you have English. And fourth, you have English. Sorry, that was, I was thinking something else, and, but this is basically it. So this is saying that first period, you have math. Second period, you have math. Third period, you have English. Fourth period, you have English. Now, as weird as that would be, it is a possibility, right? You can do that. If you can do whatever this function says you have to do, then it's a function, so this relation actually works out. It is what we call a function. Let's look at one that doesn't work. And maybe you can see where I'm going with this. Um, let's say that first period you have English, second period you have math, oops. Third period you have history, and I'll need a couple more, I think. Let's say fourth you have PE, and then just to get something weird going, let's say that second you have PE also. Uh, 
And so what's wrong here as you look at this? Now, originally, before again, before this year, I would have said, well, this is kind of weird, right? I'm showing that fourth period and second period I have PE. That seems weird. Why do I have PE twice? But it is doable. It is possible, okay? So since we could do that, there's no problem there. That still, as weird as it might be or as fun as it might be, I guess, um, it's, it's not really an issue. You could do it. What really breaks everything down is right here. Notice in, during second period, you have to be in two locations. So being in two locations at once is the issue. And this right here tells us that this is not a function. Now you can't read that, that's under my head. Um, that means not a function. Because you can't physically do that, have two classes during the same period, okay? It's like being in two places at once and it just doesn't work out. So that's a quick little rundown of maybe a, a more relatable example to when something is or isn't a function, okay? It's when you have to be in two places at once, okay? So let's go ahead and wait, where'd I go? I went the wrong way. Let's go ahead and look at this problem here. Let's determine whether each relation, uh, relationship is a function and explain. So here we see that seven goes to three, eight and nine both go to one and 10 goes to two. That is a function. I don't have two lines coming from any of these. So we would say function. And we can say only one output per input. If you think about the example on the other page, that last one where I had two lines coming out of one of them, that would mean that I have two outputs for seven in this case. Okay. Uh, this one here, I have three as an input and then zero, two, four, and six as outputs. That one is not a function. In that three, can't be in four places at once. <laughs> okay, three can't be in four places at once. Let's look at what that looks like on a table. Determine whether or not it's a function. So, it ba and tables basically work the same as those, those circle mapping diagrams um, where they just put a line every single time you have a new input matched to a new output. Um, it says here, uh, so I've got 5 to 7, 10 to 6, 15 to 15, uh, 20 to 2, and 25 to 15. It says since 15 is a repeated output, so we see that 15 is in these two places. One input value is paired with two output values. If that, recur if that occurs, the relationship is, uh, can still be a function. So that's not an issue, okay? The, the more important thing is that I don't have any repeated values on the left side, on the input side. So they're just kind of cluing into that, that idea that, well, you could have math twice or you could have PE twice. That's what this is relating to. Okay, let's go past that. Uh, let's look at this one. So I have 1 to 10, 5 to, 5 to 8, 4 to 6, 1 to 4, and 7 to 2. What I see here is that I have 1 in the inputs going to two different outputs. So that's not a function. Okay. <clears throat> so this question says, uh, what is always true about the numbers in the first column of a table that represent a function? Why must this be true? Um, the numbers in the, in the first column or the left column um, should all be different. Uh, 
Okay, we're going to say all inputs should be different. Right. And why, why must this be true? Uh, repeated inputs repeated inputs um, I don't want to say they guarantee but but they, um, they they cause two outputs. for one input. Sorry, this pen lag is driving me insane. And slowing me way down. Okay. Let's go ahead and keep looking here. Let's look at these your turn problems. Uh, just looking down the row, or down the column, I have 53 to 53, 24 to 24, 32 to 32, 17, 17, 45, 45. Even though they all just get mapped to their same number, it's a function. One output per input. Okay. Um, on this one, I have 1452, 821, 2716, 3625, and 834. The issue here is that the 8 as an input is repeated. Okay, we might say, uh, well, we'll probably have to start off with saying that it's not a function. So, not a function. Okay, not a function. Um, I'm not even going to say repeated input. I'm just going to say um, two outputs for eight. Okay, the, the input eight has two different outputs. Okay. Now let's look at uh, what, a, what a graph might look like to represent these. Okay. Um, it says that graphs can be used to display relationships between two sets of numbers. Each point on our graph represents an ordered pair. The first coordinate in each ordered pair is the input value. The second coordinate is the output value. The graph represents a function if each input is paired with only one output. So let's go ahead and look at this graph. So the graph shows the relationship between the number of hours students spent studying for an exam and the exam grades. Is the relationship uh, represented? Is the relationship represented by the graph a function? Okay. So is it a function? <clears throat> they actually go so far as to write out all of the inputs and output values as ordered pairs which is a good habit. Um, but noticing with those that two has two different output values and nine has two different output values raises some, some issues, okay? That actually makes it to where it's not a function. And no, I don't wanna steal their thunder. Let me just look really quick. Oh, yeah, I am going to steal their thunder. Maybe it'll come up later. But what we like to do in math when we're looking at graphs and we're trying to decide if something is a function, let me get a nice blue line going here. We're going to run what's called the vertical line test. And what that means is I'm going to take this vertical line and, and pass it through my graph. And if there's any place where that graph touches the vertical line twice, then it's not a function. 
So here we're good, it's only touching it once, it's touching it once, and right here it touches it twice. It actually did the same thing uh, back at two, but when it touches it twice, if it touches it twice anywhere, then it's not a function. So this area is an issue, as well as this one back here. I've decided just to use nudge keys to bump it back. Um, we're almost there. Yeah, so this is an issue as well right here. So that can be kind of a quick check when you're given a graph to see if a, if a graph represents a function. Use what we call the vertical line test. Um, it says many real world uh, relationships are functions. For example, the amount of money made at a car wash is a function of the number of cars washed. Give another example. So another example of a function. And I'm just going to ask you to prepare one. An example for class. So bring an example of a real world function to class tomorrow. Okay, let's look at this one on the your turn. Uh, the graph shows the relationship between heights and weights of members of a basketball team. Is the relationship represented by the graph a function? Yes or no? And explain. So we have height in inches and weight in pounds. And if we look through here, we notice that we have somebody at 70 inches that weighs, you know, probably uh, 165 pounds. Um, that's this one right here. And then somebody also at 70 inches that weighs 175 pounds or somewhere in there. So since we have two... Uh, and it only takes one time for this to happen. So looking at like that vertical line test, it doesn't matter that it happens again here. Okay, here at 71 inches, that same idea happens again. That doesn't matter. You just have to pick one. Okay, uh, we might say, so we got to say not a function. Okay, not a function. To spell it right, but the pen lagging out is messing with me. Um, we have two players. I'm just going to pick on the 70 inchers. Uh, two 70 inch players with different weights. Jeez. I'm just going to write it and hope it works out. <laughs> okay, two 70-inch players with different weights. So that's an issue. Makes it not a function. I got to think the only possibility today for a code word, you might think it's function, but I'm going to skip function. And I'm going to use our more general idea of a relationship. So our code word today is relationship. So that'll be it for today. Make sure you finish that, uh, that reflection and we will see you in class.